Get ready to set some loose bones free in a vat of acid, because this week's Rick and Morty is an extra dark one. Don't get me wrong, season 4 episode 8 is one of the best of the season, probably even the series, but it's definitely a lot darker than it initially seems. I had to watch it twice before the gravity of the episode really sunk in, and obviously it's too horrific not to share with y'all. I'm Whitney Van Lanningham, and today we're breaking down the vat of acid episode. Before we get started, I want to give a shout out to our super nerd sponsor of the day, Zachary Turner. Thanks to toxic Avengers like them, we're able to survive another week of dastardly oil cans filled with radioactive waste. Want to support Nerdwire? Check out the link in the description box and see if any of our Patreon donation tiers work for you. If t-shirts are more your speed, you can also click the link to our Tee Public affiliate store and get yourself some sweet Rick and Morty swag. Now onto the vat of acid! The episode begins with Rick and Morty traveling to an industrialized planet full of vats of acid in order to trade some important crystals with an alien species. But surprise, the aliens give them fake crystals and try to kill them, so Rick and Morty dive into a fake vat of acid that Rick set up in case of this exact situation. Rick's plan was for him and Morty to jump in, hook themselves up to the underwater breathing apparatus, and release a set of fake bones to prove that their flesh was melted in that radioactive mountain dew goo. Morty is incredibly unimpressed. Unfortunately, the head criminal takes their deaths really hard. He just doesn't get why Rick would give up that easily and take his innocent grandson with him to an excruciating, unnecessary death. He decides to hang out with his cronies to process his feelings, and Morty, sick of waiting around in a tub full of fake acid, blows their cover and kills the bad guys. All the way home, Morty keeps complaining to Rick about how lame the vat of acid was, and even accuses him of getting old and senile. He says that all of his grandpa's ideas are lame, and bets Rick that he can't make a remote control with a save mode like in a video game that can grant the user do-overs of moments of their life. Rick thinks this is hella dumb, and insists that he doesn't F with time travel. But Morty keeps being a dick about it, so he begrudgingly agrees to invent the device for his grandson. Okay. Can we talk for a sec about how disillusioned Morty has become with his grandpa? And not for bad reasons. This season alone, he's already orchestrated an entire heist just to discourage Morty from finishing a screenplay, mocked Morty unceasingly for wanting a dragon, and punched Morty in the face for creating a snake time paradox. And that's not even counting all the messed up stuff he's gotten Morty into in all the other seasons. Some people on the internet are even saying that Morty getting fed up and annoyed with Rick might be the beginning of Morty C-137's descent into evil Morty. But we can come back to that later. All I'm saying is, Rick has been colossally terrible lately, and for extremely petty reasons. I mean, okay, accidentally causing snake net wasn't great, but your grandpa shouldn't walk around doling out black eyes every time you accidentally summon Snake Hitler. After successfully creating the save remote for Morty, Killing Morty and then bringing him back to life at the point where he hit save, Rick sarcastically asks him if he wants to hear about all of the technical science behind it or if he wants to just start having fun. Because Morty is a normal teenager, he immediately starts messing around with his new clicker. Morty realizes that he can use the clicker to do anything he wants. From pantsing his math teacher, to sampling every flavor of ice cream, to doing whatever the hell this is. At first, he really just uses the remote for fun, silly things, but eventually, Morty meets a girl at a coffee shop that he really likes and develops a serious relationship with her. Side quest? What kind of kitschy, meet-cute coffee shop is next to an adult bookstore? Where do the Smiths live? Silver Lake? Anyway, their relationship has its ups and downs like any relationship does, but it seems like this is the happiest Morty has ever been. I don't see Grandpa Rick hanging out with him and his girlfriend, and it kind of seems like Morty's doing a lot better without him around. That is, until Morty and his girlfriend are involved in a horrific plane crash that mirrors the 1993 movie Alive, based on the real-life crash of Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571 into the Andes Mountains. I probably don't need to say it after that description, but this is where shit starts to get real dark. After eating some of their fellow passengers, Morty makes the long icy trek back to the severed tail of the airplane, where he finds the remote as well as a cell phone. He wakes up in the hospital having been rescued, and it seems like he and his girlfriend are going to be able to go back to their normal lives after the crash. Until Jerry Fs it up by accidentally clicking the remote. Now Morty has to start all over again at his last safe space, right outside that titty joint looking like a damn fool in front of the woman who no longer knows him. That by itself would be pretty messed up. I mean, they survived a horrific plane crash and cannibalized their friends together. 
That's not the kind of stuff you can just recreate with a new partner, you know? Now, instead of having hot survivor's guilt sex with his girlfriend, he's reliving the finale of Futurama over and over and over again, except with pepper spray. Man, poor Morty. But because Rick really knows how to coat a knife in lemon juice and twist it in deep, he reveals that it wasn't actually a do-over button. Morty wasn't time traveling. He was simply experiencing alternate theoretical realities over and over and over again. Each time he zapped himself, that version of himself in that reality would die, and C-137 Morty would shunt into this new reality, replacing the melting version of himself and allowing him his do-over. If that scrambles your brain a little, don't worry. The best way to explain it is when Rick tells Morty that he prestiged himself. If you haven't seen the 2006 psychological magician thriller The Prestige, who oh boy am I about to spoil something great for you. Get over it. It came out over a decade ago, and you had plenty of time to watch it instead of Now You See Me Too. If you have seen The Prestige, you know why this is the perfect example. Basically, Hugh Jackman is a stage magician who hates Christian Bale, who is also a stage magician. So he hires David Bowie to build him a machine that will allow him to perform a trick where he seemingly teleports himself across the theater each night. Turns out that David Bowie's machine was just duplicating Hugh Jackman, and Hugh too was falling through a trap door in the stage each night to his watery death. AKA, every time Hugh Jackman performed this magic trick, he killed himself. Underneath the stage was just a mass grave of Hugh Jackman clones that Homeboy wasted every night just because he wanted to be better at magic tricks than Christian Bale. So does it make more sense now? Each of the versions of Morty that pressed the button was just another dead Hugh Jackman. He was literally killing himself thousands of different ways every single time he pressed that button. Which really makes this cheese puff eating scene super disturbing in retrospect. He's unknowingly dying every time he misses his mouth hole. You can't tell me that's not a mini horror movie in itself. Theoretically, for some of these Mortys to get to their place in the timeline, they also would have seen the remote work according to Morty's initial understanding, meaning these Mortys would have thought everything was peachy keen until they started boiling out of nowhere. To make matters even darker, for Rick to test the remote earlier in the episode, he would have had to have killed himself and his Morty in cold blood. Throwing shade at Ant-Man and the Wasp on his way, Rick explains to Morty that he doesn't respect time travel, and that he didn't invent a device that allowed Morty to go back in time with no consequences, but rather a device that would force Morty to pay the ultimate consequence, aka death, over seemingly insignificant repeated actions. That's messed up, yo! It's one thing to teach your grandson not to sass you about your acid vats, but it's a whole other ballgame to trick your grandson into killing thousands of innocent versions of himself just to make a point. And it's not just Morty he's messing up with this. Imagine all of the other versions of his parents and classmates and random strangers that have to watch him die a terrible, painful death. Like, he was just sprouting boils and melting in the discarded reality every time Morty pushed that button but all of those other people were fully aware of what was happening, and probably deeply disturbed. Especially when Jerry accidentally yeets Morty back to the jerk-off supply store. He and his girlfriend survived all of that bullshit, and then Morty just explodes on the couch. Remember when Rick gave Morty the option to either listen to him or have fun? This is apparently what he would have explained to him. So now, he's also shaming Morty for not heeding his warning, even though it was barely a warning to begin with. I don't know, man. This is way different than the Death Crystals thing where Morty went off on his own and managed to mess things up all by himself. This time, Rick really set him up for failure. And in this case, failure meant going full Elliot Smith on thousands and thousands of versions of himself. None of them look like they died quickly either, so you know that each individual rotting Morty realized what was happening as their melting flesh dripped into the streets. But that still wasn't enough! Rick then gives Morty the option to erase what happened to all of those other Mortys by forcing the timelines to merge and average into one cohesive probable timeline. Morty agrees, and I gotta say, that looks like it sucks! To make things worse, a SWAT team and a bunch of protesters show up to confront Morty for all the horrible things he thought he wasn't doing. They're out for blood, including the AARP, because Morty totally forced that man out of his wheelchair. That's the American Association of Retired People for those who need the acronym spelled out. Side quest, the bar in the background of this scene is totally Moe's Tavern from The Simpsons. Noise. 
Rick makes Morty kiss his acid vat and dive back in, forcing him to use Rick's preferred tactic to avoid consequences. But seriously, that was a lot to put Morty through just to teach him a lesson. And that's why some people think that evil Morty might be born out of those circumstances. Like I said earlier, Morty's been getting punked by his grandpa since the beginning, but some instances are obviously taken to heart more than others. For example, the first time we really see Morty finally being affected by Rick's cruelty is in the finale of season one, when he realizes that he's just a tool for Rick to use, and that almost all Ricks kinda hate their Mortys. I feel like this is where the biggest shift happened for Morty, and that each season there's been a new defining moment that further disillusions Morty against his grandfather. Like when Rick used the Vindicators to make Morty hate superhero adventures, or when he basically made it clear that he considers his attachment to Morty so irrational and useless that the love he feels for his grandson was part of his toxic personality. Then of course there are the countless bad things that are stored in Morty's mind blowers that Morty probably doesn't even realize have happened. All of those things combined could drive a Morty to the edge. But is Morty C-137 really evil Morty? Would Evil Morty use the time travel Rick despises as an act of revenge? Who's to say? This is totally just a theory for fun, and we haven't even seen Evil Morty yet this season. I want to know what you guys think in the comments! Did you feel like this episode was extra dark, or is that just me? Do you think Morty's angst towards Rick is the normal teenage kind, or do you think he's prepping to go full evil? Let me know in the comments below, like and subscribe to Nerdwire, and it looks like I'll be eating ass flambe.